The M4 Pro MacBook is probably the best bang for the buck performance laptop you can buy and today we are going to be comparing it against the M3 Pro that it is replacing because this year Apple upgraded the chip by far the most out of the whole lineup compared to last year, the M3 Pro actually got less cores. So this is gonna be a crazy comparison. And here are the full specs side by side. You guys could see we have 24 gigs of RAM now as base, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of the box. You guys can see we have the same exact color and on the outside, they look practically identical. We have the same amount of ports. Um, the display is almost the same. It gets a little bit brighter in the daytime with auto brightness, but other than that, it's hard to tell a difference. Let's get right into testing. The first thing I wanna do is test out and compare the SSDs. Now looking at write speed, they are very similar. Actually, the M3 slightly won. Same thing for the read speeds. That's very interesting because um, I expected it to be a little bit faster. And of course, these always change a little bit each run. So it looks like we didn't get a big difference in the at least the base 512. And the crazy thing is I said the ports are the same. They are all the same layout, but the M4 does run Thunderbolt 5 now, the M4 Pro model and Max. So you actually have three times faster connectivity for like external um, SSDs but their internal hard drives can't even go up that fast, which is insane. Now, as you guys can see, both laptops are charged to 100%, and I'm gonna go ahead and unplug both of them. And as we do these tests, we're gonna see which laptop has better battery life. And now I have Geekbench 6 opened up right here, and as you guys can see, we not only have higher clock speeds for the M4 Pro, but we have a difference in cores. This M3 Pro has 11 cores compared to 12, but this actually only has five performance cores compared to eight. So we are gonna probably see a big difference here. And look at these numbers, guys. This is insane. For single core, we're up almost to 4,000, 24% gain, which is awesome. But for multi-core, we're above 20,000. That's 43% gain in performance, when do you get those kind of gains year over year from any other manufacturer? Wow. Guys, I have to just mention this again because this score, it's literally at that level of the M3 Max 16 core unb unbinned, which is a $4,000 computer. This is a binned $2,000 M4 Pro and is getting that level of performance. I mean, the value you're getting for the performance is insane. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the graphics. As you see, we're jumping from 14 core graphics up to 16 core graphics. Let's go ahead and run this test. And here are the graphics numbers. The M4 Pro practically hits 100,000. We're literally getting 40% better graphics performance year over year. I mean, that is massive in a one year upgrade. And now I wanna jump into Xcode because with all that CPU performance, that can make a major difference. All right guys, we have our results and it looks like it only took 108 seconds with the M4 Pro compared to 140. That's about 30% faster and that is an excellent gain. And to put that into perspective, that's basically the same time as an M1 Ultra Max Studio 20 core that costs 4,000 bucks and just a little bit behind the M2 Ultra desktop. That is just blowing my mind. And now I have Figma opened up right here. This is a web design program and this project is brought to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California. I have a lot of high resolution layers here. I'm gonna zoom in and see just how fast everything loads. So we see some pixelation. Bam, that loaded up, took a few seconds there. Let's try it with the M4 Pro. We know we have a lot more performance. Let's go to that same spot and bam. Definitely a little bit quicker there. And now I have these 12 high resolution layers selected. I'm gonna go ahead and export these and we're gonna see how long it takes. So that took a minute and nine seconds on M4 Pro compared to a minute and 22. So we're definitely seeing some gains. This is of course a web-based application. With that, I also wanna test out speedometer 3.0. Of course, the M3 Pro is also not a slouch. Here are the results, about 10% difference there. So you're not gaining the full performance of all that multi-core, but 
There is no faster computer for web-based applications that a lot of people use than the M4 Pro. And now let's take a look at Logic Pro Performance. Both these machines are gonna be excellent at it, but let's see what the difference is. Now we just messed around with this for a long time and guys, the difference is huge. I was not expecting this. We got 115 layers in this benchmark, New Logic Benchmark 2, you guys can look it up, compared to 220. 115 compared to 220, almost double. How is that possible? Well, the M3 Pro actually did worse than the M2 Pro because we had less performance cores, less memory bandwidth. This matched it and we actually went way higher. So for Logic, if you really are gonna be pushing it, the M4 Pro has a massive improvement. And now let's get back to some graphics tests. I have 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite opened up here in unlimited mode, which is more of a gaming workload. We'll see how many improvements we got. And look at that guys, we have 37.8 compared to 49.8. That is 32% higher frames per second for the same amount of money. I mean, when do you see those kind of gains? Year over year, that is crazy. Now, now I also wanna test out Solar Bay, which also adds in ray tracing. We know that the ray tracing has been improved. So let's take a look. And look at this, we went from 76 frames per second up to 108. 42% improvement when we're adding ray tracing into the mix. I mean, that is just blowing my mind, the value you get for this new machine. And next I wanna test out Blender because the graphics performance is so good on this machine. Right away, even loading up the project is quicker on the M4 Pro. We have everything loaded up, we're using GPU cycles rendering, and let's go ahead and start this. And the M4 Pro is flying here. And here we go, we have 49 seconds compared to uh, pretty much a minute seven. So that's about 37% faster for this project. And if you're doing a lot of rendering, I mean, you can actually use the M4 Pro for some more serious work. And now I have Adobe Lightroom Classic opened up right here, the newest version with a bunch of high resolution images. All of these have effects included on the raw files. Let's go ahead and export these. These are gonna use the CPU and the GPU, as you guys could see on the M4 Max. CPU's maxed out, graphics is really being pushed hard. And man, I almost missed it there, oh my goodness. Wow, the M4 Pro flew through that. Guys, that was 25 seconds compared to 40. That's not twice as fast, but that is getting close. When you're pairing the extra CPU power and the extra GPU power, the extra memory bandwidth, the extra RAM, I mean, that is crazy. I think I'm gonna have to make this test a lot harder because it's just going so quick now. If you're gonna be doing a lot of photo editing, man, this computer is gonna handle it no problem. And now getting into video editing, I'm gonna do a few tests. I know you guys wanna ask about smoothness and in all reality, even the M4 can handle this no problem for your typical 4K workflow. I have some effects here, some LUTs, film grain. That's more than a lot of people do for video editing and you have no issues. Now I will do something tougher, but first I wanna export this and see how the encoders compare. We saw the M4 actually had faster encoders than the M3, M2, and M1, which were really the same. What about the M4 Pro? Let's go ahead and take a look. And just like the M4, the encoders have been improved. It took two minutes compared to two minutes and 30 seconds. Not a huge difference, but it's the first time since the M1 that we're getting that improvement. Of course, if you get the M4 Max, you get dual encoders and that will make it easier even faster. And here I have some 4K60 Canon RAW footage applied color corrections. We have a LUT on here. And as you see, both of them are playing it very well. My Mac Pro could actually not even play this. So um, even for tough footage, both are handling this fine. The thing is that, the thing is the M4 Pro is only using 39% CPU, 60% graphics to do so. So I think what I could do for you guys is a timeline render. Let's go ahead and hit start. I'll start my timer here. And that is because for timeline smoothness, it really depends on what footage you're using, how many effects you have. There's so many things that go into it and I can make a timeline very difficult. Both of these systems chop up, uh, but in reality, um, if you have one of these machines, they're gonna do a great job. As you guys can see here, the M4 Pro is smoking it. Wow, 
that is a huge difference. Uh, so if your system is struggling, your timeline slows down, yeah, get one of these new machines. Dang, okay. This thing got done while the M3 Pro wasn't even at 50% yet with this five minute timeline. Looks like it picked up at the end there and the final time is a minute and five seconds for the M3 Pro and 45 seconds for the M4 Pro. That's the combination of the CPU and the GPU. I mean, the M4 Pro is an absolute beast. Uh, you can edit red footage, red raw footage on the system, no problem, unless you're doing some crazy complex things, which maybe the M4 Max is gonna be better for that, but this is just crazy impressive. And now I have Cinebench opened up right here. We're gonna max out these CPU cores. We have a 10 minute stress test. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna see the performance and how hot this gets and how loud. Now I have MX Power Gadget over here and wow, 39, almost hit 40 watts here compared to 22. Jeez Louise, let me scoot this down over here so you guys can compare just that graph there. Uh, so that's a total package power. CPU is at 40 right there, hit 40 compared to 23. Yeah, the M4 Pro is using a lot more power. Like I mentioned, we have five performance cores compared to eight and higher clock speeds as well. Now looking at the temps, I don't know if this is exactly correct, uh, but we did hit 108 pretty quick, 95 here compared to 82. Definitely it is heating up quicker. And let me go ahead and open up my fan program here. Um, unfortunately, we don't have an update yet for all the CPU temperatures perfectly, uh, but we can still look at the fans and here we're at pretty much idle while here the fans are already kicking up. So I'm guessing the M4 Pro machine, we have the same fans, it's gonna run hotter and louder because of all the extra performance. Now, as you guys can see here, the M4 Pro already lowered down its clock speeds. Um, so we're at 34 watts or so. The M3 Pro, actually went up a little bit, so it's slowly tapering up. And as far as heat, I mean, they're actually averaging similar now, but it's not only the CPU that can get hot, it's the whole chassis that will get hot, and you could have to lower down the performance a little bit. So clock speeds now, we have 3.58 compared to 3.67 for the performance cores, 3.64. They're actually gonna even out in clock speeds, but of course, we still have those extra cores. All right guys, now I have my thermal camera here. Looking at the M3 Pro, we're at 34 degrees Celsius. M4 Pro, 38, right over there. So yes, this thing is hotter, runs louder, and it does slow down. We need more powerful fans in the system. And while this is finishing up, I have to say, if you were thinking about getting an M4 Max in a 14 inch, don't do that. I would put money down that the 16 inch M4 Pro would actually beat out a 14 inch M4 Max in a variety of tests. We actually saw that with the M3 version. Now, this actually gets hotter than it did before. So a lot of performance, it's still gonna spank this one, but we're starting to see the limitation once again of having a thin and small computer. And holy moly guys, this is Crazy. We have 882 points for M3 Pro and 1,324 points for M4 Pro. So even with the slowing down of the chip, clocking down, that's 50% faster. That is insane. Absolutely insane performance difference. And if it didn't slow down, wow. I mean, even with that, I don't even care. That year over year improvement, is ridiculous and it would smash other computers, even more expensive ones from previous years. Wow. And with all those tests done after hours of doing this, what's the battery life like? Well, I think it's gonna be interesting. Let's look at the M3 Pro. We are at 38% now. Of course, we were really pushing these systems, 38% battery life, that's good. The M4 Pro, 29% percent. So this is actually rare 
that this happens. Usually the new system will use less power, but not this year. And that is only because of how much more performance we're getting and how much more GPU cores we have, how much more CPU performance cores we have. They actually ditch some efficiency cores to give us more performance cores. And I will take that trade off any day. The battery life is still excellent. It did get worse, but the performance you're getting really incredible guys so there you guys go you saw all of that i have to say i think this is the one of the most important uh, impressive year over year gains we ever saw and for a thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars great system not much has changed hardware wise other than thunderbolt 5 which is future proof for so many years into the future but the performance you're getting for the money what you could do with this system for that money I mean, it is insane. Apple has a huge winner on their hands and this is the MacBook that I am recommending. You can spend a little more money if you wanna unlock the M4 Pro chip. This is the binned version and we will test that. So make sure you guys are subscribed if you wanna see if you should spend that extra $200. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click that circle about to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.